Bob, welcome back. Appreciate you. you being here. Thank you. You're my first Comal Cruising back from the pandemic. All right. Yeah, That's so welcome. And what a great topic to start off our new series of Comal Cruising, but to talk about growth and the growth in our area uh, when it comes to construction, housing market, and you name it, sooner in Roma. But Bob, uh, just to kind of get all of our constituents out there and those uh, who are watching this it's probably maybe a couple people by the way who knows but um about what do you do for our school district and uh yeah why don't you explain to our viewers out there what you do sure well tibbleton demographics is a consulting firm and we specialize in helping fast growth school districts by doing very detailed housing research and we turn that housing research into enrollment projections so that we can help the school district plan when and where to build schools so they can understand how fast their enrollment is going to be uh, yeah. going to be growing. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, certainly uh, when uh, this past year, the pandemic year, COVID uh, year, I guess, whatever we're calling that, uh, I was uh, quite, quite uh, frank with you. Uh, I think we talked about this. I thought we we're gonna have a, a pause. We're going to have a sort of a pause in growth of enrollment of students, you know. Uh, so I was worried about that in some sense, but maybe in some sense I always I thought that we'll get a little break, a year's worth of break of not having increased enrollment, so that we can kind of maybe catch up to some degree. But unfortunately, or fortunately, that's not the case. That's true, and it was a very uh, unusual year in so many ways. In fact, a year ago, we thought that the housing market could slow because of concerns with the economy. That was 2019, 2020 That's right. school year. Yes, and so. Or 2020, the, 2021 school year, I should yes. say. Yes, and all the signs were when you looked at the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate shot up over 13%. Right. And normally, we would see a slowdown in housing. Right but not this time we actually saw the opposite we saw an increase in housing activity during the past year which during the pandemic year during the pandemic year yeah what do you attribute that to bob i mean just out of you know i don't know it just it seems kind of contrary to what was happening in other places perhaps in the country in our state maybe you know there's a couple of factors that uh, probably uh, helped facilitate that and one of those was with the, you know, we did see an increase in virtual learning. Well, we saw a big increase in remote work. Sure. So a lot of families were able to kind of pivot and that might have been in apartments were thinking, wow, I need to get into a house with more space. And so we did see a real movement that happened from those younger families to uh -huh. get into housing. Also, the affordability at the time sure. was good. The good. interest rates were low. <laughs> right, not anymore. But The interest rates are still okay, but the cost has gone up due primarily to the inflation on materials and labor. You also attribute the migration of those from outside the state coming to Texas specifically around here, of course, Central Texas Hill Country, Comal ISD. We see on the ground talking with our principals as they enroll new parents, new students into our schools. Uh, majority of them, a good number of them are coming from places like California and other places. That's so true. You know, Texas has had a really good year in terms of corporate relocations and especially tech jobs in the Austin area and the Comal School District is close enough to Austin that some of the families that live in Comal are likely working in Austin they're also working in San Antonio and so the the big boom has been Austin has been the focal point for Texas with the Tesla Oracle Samsung expansions and you know it's just really putting the bullseye on central texas yeah yeah well so uh what's your outlook here looking at uh, the crystal ball that you do look at uh for the upcoming year which is the 21 22 school year well post pandemic year of course. yes you know it's it's interesting because for the last five years yeah every year right has been a record-breaking year for new home construction right Five years ago, we were doing, you know, 15, 1,600 homes a year. Right. We're now going to be doing 2,800 homes for this year. 
and it's possible that we could be seeing more than 3,000 homes per year within the not too distant future. So 2021, 22, right. that school year will be another record breaking year for new home construction. And then we're gonna have a record breaking year for enrollment growth. The, uh, the old adage about availability of water, infrastructure, you're talking about these are homes that are already ready to go with all of that stuff ready to go. That's true. You know, these are subdivisions and communities that have already been platted and permitted and they're active. Yeah. And so you've got about 2,800 vacant developed lots that are on the ground ready for builders to build on today. Yeah. There's another 2,800 lots that are in development that will be delivered within the next, say, six to 10 months. And those lots have already been gone through the infrastructure pipeline so the utilities are available for those that are already in development you know as we're cruising around uh comount isd here obviously this is uh the series that uh, we're relaunching here you know uh the construction and the the traffic issues um a lot of density of home development especially in this area that we're going to be driving through right here um, where where are these folks migrating from? I mean, I mean, it's is it? I mean, is it still going to keep on? You know, uh, you know, pretty uh, robust here for the next few years. I mean, what's your thoughts on that? Well, it is. There is still a migration coming from California. In fact, I live in the Marble Falls area, and I've yeah. met two new neighbors yeah. that have recently moved from California. I have many. And it is the relocation of jobs. It's the cost of living in Texas. And you know, it's a multiple of factors that are causing the migration. We're also seeing it from the Northeast, the right. Chicago area. The Midwest. Midwest. And so Texas is just the, um, it's still the fastest growing state right. in the country. Right. We'll see that again when the 2020 census is released that Texas will be you know, the fastest growing state again. The uh, comparison of our school district, uh, who is also, I mean, I, I, I figure, as we talked about in the past, we're in the, probably in the top five, if not in the top three, fastest growing in the state of Texas, I would think. That's true. And, you know, we work primarily with fast growth districts. The closest one that has similar housing and similar geography would be the Denton School District. Is that right? They're pretty big, but they're not as big geographically they're as not. you are. They're not. Um, We're 589 square miles there, Bob. That's right, and, and you've got growth in multiple areas, so it almost feels like you're the equivalent of four school districts. It does feel like that. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm not going to be uh, sorry in talking about it, but it, it's it's like running four different types of school district. Yes. Here in Comal, uh -huh. school district. You've got the 281 corridor, yeah. the Smithson Valley corridor, yeah. the I-35 corridor, and the Canyon Lake area. So easily you can kind of geographically see three. Yeah. Then Garden Ridge could sure. almost be a right. fourth area. Well, and you know, like you said though, you're right. What we see on the ground is that growth is happening in all those areas you just mentioned. So it's not just in one particular area. It's at all over the place. That's right. Um, and that makes it really more complex. Have you ever seen something like that in your career? No. No, you're pretty unique. Like I said, the closest one is Denton. Now, Prosper is building as many homes, but right. they're not as big geographically. They're not. They will run through their building cycle in about eight to 10 years. Is that right? You're going go to be growing for 25 years or more. There's that much land here. Right. That, and when we look at some of the future developments that right. we're watching, these right. are big, massive, master plan developments that are in the works. Yeah, the demand is, seems to be there, meaning mm -hmm. the buyers. Um, certainly parents with kids, young kids, who are looking for, hopefully, you know, what they would consider us to be a great school district to invest a large dollar amount, amount of money to buy a home these days, compared to my first starter home back in the day. And so, um, I think that has a lot of things, but you're right. I think the supply chain issue, construction prices are going up quite a bit right now. That's true. The lower the price point, typically the younger the family. So we see more elementary kids from those homes that are priced below 250. That's actually maybe moving up to 300. I know. I, it's hard to find it, a price point of that low. It nowadays. is. So then when you get above 450 and you get into 450, 600 thousand dollar range, we tend to see middle school age kids. Yeah. And some high school. And I think one of the things I talk about 
with our school board as well as uh, our, our taxpayers out there is that we are not trying to build, if we're only growing at the high school level, I don't think we need to go ahead and build, let's say, new schools because they're going to age themselves out. But what we're seeing right now, to I think the, the information that you provided us over the years, is that we're growing elementary students. That's true, yes. Well, the, the enrollment growth is looking like it could be at about 1,500 to 1,800. You've got to be kidding me. Additional students, yes. Because we typically hover around 900 to 1,000 right. kids. Uh, from a year changeover, Bob. So you're now saying somewhere around that number, which is actually a little scary to me. Yeah. I'm serious. 15 to 1800. Is that right? Yes. Are you really saying that? I'm saying that. Wow. And huh. it's a, it's partially the COVID return. Yeah. Because we sure. did, even though you did grow at a good number, yeah. you still had some families sure. that absolutely um, didn't participate at those younger grade levels. I'm right. talking pre-K kindergarten. Absolutely. So there's going to be a, a surge of pre-K kindergarten plus this increase in housing growth that's going to push that growth rate to about 1,500. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, Bob. Um, for the first one coming back to come out cruising, um, I know for some of our viewers it may not uh, be as significant, but when you say 15 to 1800 numbers of new students coming to our school district starting in August of 2021 here, I'm a little bit, uh, um, I'm gonna need to take a long vacation here. Well, and you probably will be one of the fastest, again, one of the fastest yeah. growing school districts yeah. in the state. Well, I'll tell you what, we're gonna need to go ahead and come back in sometime around September to see how these numbers pan out. But uh, if, if uh, construction and developments around here shows anything, I, I tend to agree with you now about that number so we'll see how it goes we'll see yeah well bob thanks for joining you're welcome i appreciate you yes. and you're the first one back all right to the Canal cruise that's great so, all right I enjoyed it appreciate it very much bob you're welcome